fast becoming the league's leading silverware showroom, then London Colney's the sweatshop that makes it possible. Not that there's much sweat in evidence this week. With one game of the season left, the championships in the bag, autographs are in demand and celebrations are in order. When the most common complaints in the treatment room are hangovers and writer's cramp, you know you've had a good season. Uh, I think the consistency uh, we played outstanding games, we played a few games, a few games, we've just been in there and got a result. But, I mean, that's, that's a measure of, uh, you know, what we believe in, what we work on Monday to Friday for nine months of the year. Right, let's go everybody, ready, come on, let's get everybody moving. Come on, let's go. Alan, yep. Back in the close season, it wasn't really goals George Graham had in mind when he set about strengthening the squad. On show at the Makita tournament at Wembley in August were goalkeeper David Seaman from QPR, central defender Andy Linegan from Norwich, and in a nod towards 1992, a Swede from Italy. Anders Limpar. Well, it even surprised me. I mean, I knew he was very talented. But he scored goals before. against Aston Villa in the Kita tournament, trapped at the, the far corner. Lucky to win Campbell, it's a turn. Players to his right. Groves is one of them. Smith missed it, but Campbell didn't. Kevin Campbell stakes his claim for the new season. Final of the Makita tournament eventually turned out to something of a collector's item, a national defeat. On the opening day of the league season, though, Wimbledon discovered that playing in blue doesn't matter Doria. Limpar's away on the far side, and nicely found. Takes on Joseph. And Merson, the goal is up. And Arsenal have their first league goal of the new season. has created it. Too quick off the mark for Joseph. And where was the Wimbledon marking on Merson? Nowhere. It's Arsenal certainly getting the wide positions effectively. Smith. 2-0. And I think Merson was beaten to the final touch by Wimbledon's own Keith Curl, an own goal, but Arsenal won't mind that, the points are sure now. Groves, and Smith, and Groves, 3-0, and Arsenal in the second half here have begun their season in great style and Perry Groves with a cracker breaker Elstrup let it run and King got the shot all wrong but in fact the first take play retrieved well by Briggs and a goal for Luton Lars Elstrup at the near post Rowcastle takes on the well hit Chamberlain saw it all the way. Limpa. And the goalkeeper was lucky it bounced away from those following in. A ferocious strike by Anders Limpa. And a mistake there by James. Rowcastle. 1-1. One, one. Paul Merson. They've had to work so hard, have the lead at last, and it really went through the crowd. On the half volley from Thomas, and Terry Hughes on the post, couldn't keep it out. Next up was the North London derby against Spurs, but two arrows of judgment denied Arsenal three wins out of three. The first from the referee who turned down Paul Davis's penalty claim, the second when Alan Smith steered his shot fractionally wide. 
That draw was the only difference between Arsenal and Liverpool at the top after three games, and the Gunners' good start at the back was rewarded with England call-ups for Lee Dixon, Nigel Winterburn, and who keeps Boston in part-time work. All set. Well, obviously, uh, four years with John Lukic, uh, and very successful years. And John began to come up everywhere the crowd, probably 90% of the, the fans couldn't understand why I wanted a goalkeeper. Uh, I still think John is one of the top goalkeepers in the country, but you think David Seaman the best. It was hard because I'd heard of, you know, all the things that went on the last game of the season. And, you know, when it fell through, I got a bit sick off the cube car and what have you. But I was always confident. If I got a chance to do the saves and the crowd would start liking me, which I did. There was a Seaman for England lobby before you got to Arsenal, but has being with a club as good as Arsenal made a difference as far as being noticed and selected? I think the main difference is that uh, it's a TV. You know, like you're on TV much more. You know, I've played, I don't know how many live games it is, but you know, you compare that to QPR, we played one. You know, so obviously you get noticed a lot more. The danger for Everton is in their eagerness. But they might just get caught by the committing. Dixon from right to left to Limpa. And Southall. Grove scores. 13 minutes into the second half. Actually trying to swim one of these dangerous corners. Chelsea, well fancied by uh, a number of experts to do particularly well this season. They've bought well, but they've got to defend here against Perry Groves. And across from Dixon, a header down from Merson, and a goal from Limpa! Merson, Limpa, busy making the run inside him. Tripped, David Lee the culprit, penalty to Arsenal, Dixon took on this job last season, and he sends Besant the wrrong way, and Rowcastle has found Michael Thomas all on his own, Besant has held Arsenal up but maybe only momentarily, it's number three, it's Merton. Well, it's time for all the tricks now. Oh, and Limpa refused the invitation to shoot, but Rowcastle does. And Arsenal's position improves even further. Winterburn, just a little too casual. This is Dixon. And one for Chelsea, Kevin Wilson. And David Seaman was angry with the sloppy defending. Arsenal's corner. Merson. Oh, Rokasol! Arsenal breaking out. And Limpa. That has settled it. Anders Limpa on target again. Six minutes from time. After six games, Arsenal was second, but Liverpool still hadn't dropped a point. In the Rumble Ash Cup, Leicester fancied themselves as giant killers for a bit. Well, maybe a chance here for Leicester. Phew. Oh, and it's rocketed back off the post. Merson. with Gary McAllister and well it would have been an own goal by Bold but Chapman will certainly claim it 
attacker cleared is his. Right on the line. Lee Chapman for Leeds. McAllister has given it away to Jonsson. And now Limpar. Leeds looking for offside. It's not been given. The goal has. Limpar has claimed it, although uh, Sterling might have got the final touch. But the ball actually came through on the And that's why the referee allowed Limpar to go on. Dixon. And did that like the uh, England fullback he is. And how about the pass for Merson? Limpa! That's most certainly it. McAllister's gone down. And Arsenal cannot believe it. It's a penalty. Gordon Strachan against David Seaman. 2-2. Two, two. Adams. Norwich have a lot of players back. But they haven't picked up Paul Davis, his first goal of the season. And he just really knocked it past Brian Gunn. It was a difficult bounce, and uh, the ball dropped to earth with Smith. Winterburn. For Davis. Two goals for Paul Davis in three minutes. And Nigel Winterburn's pass held the key, really. Cut back by Limpa and rounded up in style. Win over Norwich kept Arsenal second. Their unbeaten record, meanwhile, continued to keep their big pre-season signing from the Canaries out of the team. From your last point of view on the man that I got, I think, uh, you know, with coming here with such a big transfer <coughs> I think the Arsenal support should probably hope to see a little bit more of me due to the success of the team. Uh, they haven't seen that much. The man keeping the winning out was Steve Bold. Not that he had much to do in the return leg of the Rumbelows Cup. Well, it's a great experience for the third division side playing here at Highbury, and whatever happens, I'm sure their players will benefit from it. But they're in trouble here, Dixon's cross. And the first goal of the evening. And you do feel there might be more to come. It's Harry Groves. Pew. Losing out to Davis. And can assess the situation in the centre. Pew has got back. But it's another one for Groves again. a real air of enjoyment around Highbury. Merson, Smith, they've got more to cheer. Helped on by Smith, Adams is in there, he might pick one up himself, he has done. Always a, a moment that the crowd really rise to. Tony Adams, such a popular figure here, such a respected figure too. Award tonight, Arsenal's fourth. Eight minutes left. And it's all opening up for Merson. Well, how about that? Billy Stewart left stranded by some magic. Paul Merson. Who saw the goalkeeper off his line and lifted it arrogantly over him. Back in the league, Arsenal faced their first real contest of the season. Manchester United away at Old Trafford. Keith has given the goal. Arsenal stuck the goal here. And the player that they're going their new match winner. Well, he hasn't won the game here, but he's... ...out sealing.
40 minutes on defending against the purposeful Manchester United. Arsenal have taken the lead. Anders Limpard and said it was over the line. Unfortunately, it wasn't the final part of Limpard's goal that would occupy today's back pages, but the coarser aspects of the competitive spirit. In other words, the second half brawl. In all, 21 players were involved, most, it should be said, trying to calm things down. Kings, Winterburn and Limpar were both to be fined two weeks wages by the club. So were Roe Castle, Davis and George Graham. While the press reacted with their usual sense of restraint, the players stayed sane with a professional amnesia. And against Man United, we won 1 0, didn't we? That was it. Um, yeah, it was a very trying time for the players, you know, we got under the microscope, so to speak, and uh, it was a time when we all pulled together. But Spirit, as everybody said, is brilliant at the club. Um, you know, and we've the next day we'd forgotten all about, not forgotten about it, but we just got on with playing football, and uh, they and everybody else work out what they were going to do with us. Arsenal continuing to force the pace, still looking for a way past this resolute Sunderland side. Limpa brought down by Kay Dixon. Does the job. Only 17 minutes to go. But Arsenal knows in front. Well, they're letting Dixon go. Lee Dixon, the former Manchester City supporter. Brought in the pass. Dixon. And he must be. Perry Groves. Side by George Graham. It's Adams. It's certainly going Arsenal's way. Redmond. Something of a hit and hope. Quinn's it. And Clive Allen gets one back for Manchester City. Davis. Against Emerson. They tried to uh, have him aside. Still going. With a strike here that has stunned Cole. George Graham, who switched the side tactically in the second half to try and look for the win, and he might have got it thanks to his superb Swedish international. Now Winterburn. Arsenal breaking out again. Liverpool breaking out. Deflected, 2-0. Limpa has given Arsenal such a great lift here. And that will be his second goal. Coventry nil, Arsenal 2. Davis over Humphrey. Collected by Campbell and then by Limpa. Arsenal away from home coming strong in the second half again. Repeat the trick as Arsenal drill Crystal Palace. The dropping touch is having them taken away. That's what happened the following Monday, though, as the FA Tribunal on the Old Trafford fight decided to hit Arsenal where it hurt in the title race. At Lyon, it was time for a team talk. Uh, number two, it's the first opportunity I've had to talk to anybody at the tribunal uh, decision. And the media are enjoying it. The majority of the media media are enjoying it. The majority is getting all this stick. Because normally nothing comes out of Highbury, right? And they're enjoying it. Again, lads, there's one way to there's one way to handle it. Just keep winning matches. They're looking at us and the stick we get in the last couple of weeks, right? It seems fashionable just now to jump in the bandwagon and get into Arsenal. It's fashionable. 
We're not second bottom, second bottom. We're second top. And that's it. They're second, second top of the league, and it's the best for over 40 years. So keep thinking football all the time. Okay, think of football. And you should all be proud of yourself and make sure what we can, individually and collectively, right? We're proud of people. You've all got responsibilities to yourself and your families, and keep that in your mind at all times, right? Your lads, if we stay together as a unit within the club, and even now, I'm trying to sort of get the crowd right with us. Now, we've got to get the fans of our side a lot more. Like, right? Got to get the club in it, because I'm getting loads and hundreds of letters. Thing is, right? But how unfair it is that the media is on top of the bandwagon. Why are we getting bad press? We've got to get the fans of our side. When you go up north, it's almost like a gold star. Now, we've got to do the same with our fans. I'll, I'll, I'll whip them up, don't worry about that. But glad we don't watch right now. But that means we've still got to tackle, we've still got to close down, we've still got to challenge. It was one of the setbacks yeah. this year. Yeah. Set back two points. We were all a bit despondent when it happened. Um, and we were eight points behind it at, at one time. Um, but yeah, we've all stuck together through these, through these knockbacks and. Uh, had the strength of character to come through them at the end. The United uh, episode, you know, it's not one we're all proud of, but uh, these things happen in a competitive atmosphere, and I think we're very, very punished uh, for it. And so was Southampton. He was unlucky and lost his opponents. Yeah, two points back. Did a cross goal and Paul Merson did the rest. Arsenal. Southampton are struggling to go. Davis. Limpa. Yes. A cheap goal and Anders Limpa makes up for the miss. And started the run. Stop pass and then just enough pace on the shot for the ball to reach the back of the net. Winburn, Limpa, Arsenal putting their pass together. So Davis, Groves, first time cross. Alan Smith, but last opens his lead out for the season. And that sort of cross supplied by Groves he was him about Smith who's unselfish in his work for the team so appreciated by colleagues but there is nothing like scoring and Alan Smith himself Limpa beautifully Winterburn. Merson, the chance is still there. The goal is there. And Arsenal really showing that they are back in business. Demoralisation around. But now that the football has started again, their minds very much on the job. And Southampton might feel that they've come here on the wrong day. With one important game out of the way, Arsenal headed across town to QPR, what Paul Davis rates as another. I thought that was one of our best performances. Uh, we were actually losing the game 1-0. Um, and we felt that we had a lot of good football. And the breaks weren't happy. And it looked as if we weren't going to win the game. A minute. Across. Oh, and Ramos 
has given the penalty. Adams with mild protests. But I think deep down he might feel that this was a little harsh. Wegley seemed happy to go down. Wegley takes. Wegley scores. It'll come for Thomas. Oh, great save by Roberts. Davis with the free kick. And Adams blocked. And again, Merson, goal! 12 minutes left. And this rather makeshift Queen's Park side. Unable to hang on to the lead they got just before half time. Arsenal just would not give up. And finally, Merson ran. I'm quite sure where it has got, but Merson located it. Winterburn. For Campbell. And Smith. What a turn round. The sort of recovery to the side which we are capable of still winning the championship would make. Robert disappointed here. Alan Smith absolutely delighted. Bardsley. Oh, and it's all going Arsenal's way. This is Campbell. Three goals inside ten minutes in the closing stages here. And Kevin Campbell rolls it in. A Liverpool draw at Manchester City meant the two deducted points were now history. Unfortunately, Man United returned to Haunt Arsenal in the Rumble Cup. Ince teased up for Blackmore. Hughes is in... unmarked, it's 2 0. Just United not resting on their laurels. I'm a sharp. goals were as many as Arsenal conceded after 14 games in the league where they remained unbeaten. The next match was a six-pointer. It's the only other unbeaten team. It's into the near post from Davis. Masson has he forced it over the line. The goal is given for Arsenal. A real skirmish. As Grubber got to it, pushed it out. It was cleared by Benson, but it's a goal. Goal is scored by Alan 
Smith. The Arsenal go in the lead right on the stroke of half time. Adrian Dowie. Sent off. It's a sensational development now at Kenilworth Road. And now Arsenal back on their haunches because they could be pulled back to 1 1 as Dreyer lines up to take this penalty for Luton Town. Scores and it's 1 1. Deeper corner this time, Adams! And Wimbledon, who are traditionally so strong in the air, couldn't live here with the Arsenal captain. He made that his. Scales, given time to Taylor Cross for Krasinski. Arsenal look for offside, but it's 2 1. The crowd. Calling for the referee. The whistle is in. And Wimbledon run to Fashionu. But Arsenal have bigger problems than two drop points at home. Six days before Christmas, skipper Tony Adams was given a formal sentence for drunk driving. And the press would give back to the team. Mouse could manage was the best defence in the country. Remember exactly that. All credit's got to go to the came in and played. Came in and, and did really well. Um, David O'Leary and Bowley, and um, everybody stuck together. And you know we were doing it just for Tony. We were doing it for ourselves as well. But he was always in the back of our minds and when I played. And uh, you know he just gave us that little bit of steel when, when we got in confidence and you know think about him in that cell and uh, they pulled us through. Did you get to get the news live on the box? Whoever was pressure. And uh, he, I'm very proud he was brilliant. You were able to watch that? Yeah, I could call glimpses. Misjudged by Nielsen. Nipped in quickly behind him. Smith's gone into the centre. And here comes Groves. Down he goes. Arsenal look at the referee for a penalty, but it's not to be given. Comment was the defender involved, the number five. Well, it was a close one. Here comes Platt, David Platt, Miller. brilliant stop. And all to Platt as well. Might have attempted to go down there and try to influence the referee into giving a penalty. Had one thing on his mind, he was trying to score. But Seaman stopped spectacularly. Paul Williams. Oh, and you can't give the ball away to Arsenal. In this area of the pitch, the form that they've been in this season. But Alan Smith does punish the mistake. Thanks to a very precise cross bar that took Mark right out. Comes the mercenary, retrieves it, and the ball is over the line. Arsenal have got a second. And it will go down to Paul Merson on the stage, really, was just trying to get the ball across the face of the goal, and he got it over the line. Right, let's it go. Oh, to the embarrassment of his goalkeeper. And it must be a goal to Alan Smith.
Jones spurning the long throw this time. He gets a cross in. And Bryson! The score for Sheffield United! United. The low cross from Winterburn going in with Beasley into the net. Merson. Thomas. He's got in, I think, to the scorer's surprise. The little side footer towards the far post. And it just did. beaten they've contributed a great deal to this match oh and Smith is in no flag 4-1 a second for Alan Smith Davis involved once more over Thomas Smith 14 minutes into the second half Arsenal's best league start for 40 years continued into the new year, and Liverpool's cushion was down to a single uncomfortable point. The first week in January brought the third round of the FA Cup. Almost impudently steering it out to Smith. Davis on the counter attack now with Groves. Merson's there. Limpar is there as well. It's behind both of them, and Smith who was late on the scene, gets the goal. Limpar, no offside. 2-0. Now, oh, oh, Leary! What has he done? He's brought some back into the game with an own goal. Away from Mavert. Davis has got into the centre and Limpa <laughs> had no right to try for goal then. One can only assume that's what he was doing because it forced Torsved into making the save. And he can hit them so well with foot. And that was a shot, make no mistake about it. Allen has got Walsh to his right. Spurs. Fast David. And plays Paul Allen in for Spurs. And Seaman was allowed to make the save. He serves Arsenal nobly. As Walsh right here. And Allen, they were drawn towards the ball with the defenders. But back in the centre, it was a great chance. Well, David Seaman must be full of admiration. Way Neville Southall played in the first half. He might be threatened here as Groves accelerates. Oh, and it's Masson! All his feet! Arsenal come out for the second half with a real appetite to take the game by the scruff of its neck and it's been rewarded away. They've taken the lead here. The ball poked in by Paul Merson. That goal at Goodison took Arsenal past Liverpool into first place for the first time in the season. And with the FA Cup coming up, there'd be no dislodging them for at least a fortnight. First, though, there was a small identity crisis to be sorted out from the Spurs game. Nigel Winterburn, who has been known to impersonate Dave Seaman on occasion, having been mistaken for a foreigner. Oh, that was quite funny, actually. Uh, 
there's just me and Andrew was close together and he just happened to and someone running by. And the next thing I know that the ref is booking me. And I'm trying to tell the ref that, um, it, it, you know, it wasn't me, I, I can assure you, but he wasn't having any of it and so I went in the book. Uh, because I was close to, to be suspended anyway, uh, I pitched against it and uh, got off. Then came the season longest running TV serial, Arsenal and Leeds, fourth round of the FA Cup. Sterling, time to measure the cross. Yes! Lee Chapman! But here's Limpart, and Leeds are doing the chasing now. Limpart for Arsenal, 1-1! One, one. A wonderful equaliser! What a reply! After 23 games, the unbeaten record had to go eventually. At least it didn't happen at White Hart Lane. Leeds and Arsenal were giving Sutton a bad name. This is game number four at Allen Road after draw number three at Highbury. have a free kick chance to uh, double their lead right on half time Chapman Dixon into one two with Linigan and Lee Dixon has the goal and that is very very sweet satisfaction Strachan Lee's leaning heavily on his capacity it's Before a slightly smaller crowd at Highbury on the same day, another long-running saga was ending. The Adams came straight out of and into the reserves against Reading. His first game for two months, rehearsal for his return to the first team, 11 days later at Shrewsbury. By Merson, in comes Linigan on the far side. Well, David O'Leary gets himself and the ball out of the net, and Arsenal are in front.
impose their quality again. contributed some very important but uh, me and Kevin have been able to work up quite a good relationship over, over the latter part of the season. Kevin Campbell, I always thought, thank God, this club don't have to come against there. With ten vital goals during the run-in, Kevin Campbell filled the Rambo role perfectly. He found total recall a bit more difficult though. Talk us through the first one. I can't remember it as it goes, but... Uh, I can't remember. Mason working back and making the interception on the far side. Much easier to pass the ball than to run with it. And Thomas has made the ball do the work with a delightful finish. Hard work for Arsenal, but they're in front now. the centre by Winterburn where Thomas had already made the run, did it, controlled it and chipped it into the back of the net. Despite the defeat at Chelsea, Arsenal was still top when they travelled to Anfield to face Liverpool who'd lost a manager in two games in quick succession. Well it is impossible to watch this game without thinking all the time back to that amazing champions and we've beat them twice and they haven't scored against us so you know it's nice to take six points to beat the champions. The Liverpool game also marked the emergence of David Hillier, a failed basketball player, bottom of the class beneath Nigel Winterburn at Big Dave's goalkeeping academy, the latest in a long line of stars to emerge from the Gunners youth scheme. It's so cool for a youngster. He uh, came in and probably surprised everybody with his outstanding performance uh, of marking Mulby up at Liverpool and we beat Liverpool 1-0. Again, this is uh, full credit, not not from me, not to me, but from me to the youth setup of the club. David, what were your ambitions? What were your goals at the start of the season? Because you obviously weren't in the first team. Well, now I, um, I had a con contract to the end of the season, and it was the first priority was to get that contract renewed. And um, I'd set myself the target of getting a couple of first team. I'm up to Twenty, coming up to 21 years of age, so you know, I've got to be looking now towards that. You think you'll get your contract renewed? I think I've already had it. <laughs> Winterburn waiting while Bold came forward, but it was a short throw in the end. But Campbell meets the cross and steers a header just beyond the fingertips of John Bourne. Cheetah. That's Dublin. Deflected beyond Seaman's dive. Dublin will claim it. Bold. Great save, but Adams has forced it over the line. Arsenal regain their grip on the game. Well, these teams 
know so much about each other. Sixth meeting of the season. Great respect for each other as well, as that cup saga showed. David Seaman wanting to uh, bypass the midfield with his clearance. Smith to the right. And here's Campbell! Well, Leeds, as I was saying, know a lot about Arsenal for perhaps a little less about Campbell. Well, they know about him now. It's been a long wait for the Ivory faithful. And Campbell goes on, Leeds hesitates, and he's bundled in a second. It's Kevin Campbell's day. Smith again, a major influence, and Campbell refused to give it up and got his reward. Smith first two. And here's Campbell, he's got the strength. Four goals in three games now this muscular youngster and he's steering Arsenal close to the championship it's a goal Jensen turned and shot instantly and caught Arsenal out Lippard making a run short corner and maybe it's a little caught out by that he's got other plans he's made his signal it's deep Adams wins it Smith miss kicks O'Leary it was a chance Davis a rope Campbell well Smith shoots not too many opportunities in this <laughs> While Arsenal drew, Liverpool went back to the top of the table via a 7-1 thrashing of Derby, who must have been cursing the league's fixtures computer, because the following week, they entertained the Gunners. Old Smith, straight from the training ground. Davis with the corner. Bowles there again. Oh, and Smith! An identical goal to Smith's first. Mercy. Here's Winterburn.
everything being done at a very fast pace by Arsenal at the moment. Too quick for Villa. Limpa! It's another for Smith. Well, when Arsenal won the championship two years ago, Smith's regular supply of goals was very much to the forefront, and he's matching that again this season. And will it mean the title again? Nigel Spink leads the match on a stretcher. David Platt puts on the jersey. The Villa will want to get this match over with now. They've got to try and protect the Platt as well. Here's Campbell. And there's nothing that Aston Villa could do about that. It's five for Arsenal, a second for Campbell. And the standing goalkeeper finding out quickly how difficult this job is in the first division, particularly when you've got an inform opponent like Kevin Campbell. Arsenal 5, Aston Villa. It's easy for Adam. For Arsenal, Smith and Campbell. Now, can Campbell use his strength? He, he tucks it away. And his run continues. Watson. Might fall for him. <laughs> now, who's going to come out of this mess in possession? Well, it's Nixon who clears. Campbell who shrugs Beasley aside. Smith is there with him. Smith takes it early and steers it home with real style. And Arsenal have broken out to take a two-goal lead. Winterburn. Merson. Might try and line up a shot for himself here. Oh, a double deflection. And I think it finally flew in off Mickey Adams. Yes. As Liverpool, without dog leash, struggled to find form, Arsenal not only regained the top spot, they built up what looked like a comfortable eight-point lead. And with the FA Cup semi-final looming, there was inevitable talk of the double. Are there any particular games that stand out for you? Any performances? Uh, I know what, for different reasons, this game. Uh, the time we didn't perform to anything like we should have done. Gascoigne strikes! Oh! Fabulous! They're going to be two up there! Well, the whole psychology of the semi final could change. If Arsenal could grab a goal here. Dixon crosses. Set! They have won it! Mabbott to Lineker. Allen to the left. Samway is going ahead of Lineker, who's opened it up for himself. Oh, and it's brushed through the goalkeeper! In the time on a tradition, Arsenal were now free to concentrate on the league. They needed to. Liverpool, with Graham Souness in charge, used the runners away day at Wembley to cut their lead to five points. Glided on by Smith. And look at Campbell. He made the defenders seem like statues. His reaction for first class. Perhaps Manchester City also. And they're a goal down. It, can cross it, Smith, Arsenal have a second, and Paul Merson, great 
Great work by Groves on the right. Great appreciation by Smith in the centre. He knew where Merson was. But it still needed some scoring, and Merson was up to the task. Forward by Brennan, and it's a penalty. Niall Quinn went down. Foul by Bold. Mark Ward. 2-1. Manchester City are away again. And David White, who is one of the fastest forwards around and finishes very well too. And Arsenal in danger of dropping a couple of points or maybe worse. concern around Highbury tonight with Liverpool in action of course as well at home to Crystal Palace there's no margin for error for Arsenal Davis it's a penalty all eyes on Lee Dixon Arsenal lead Seaman would enjoy being a winner against his old club. The second goal could seal that. And Campbell, is he going to collect it? No, but Marson is. Well, the raw aggression of Kevin Campbell, again, a major factor. Stejkal blocked the first shot. Marson was first to the rebound. Liverpool had won two straight, and the home draw against Manchester City meant Arsenal were just three points ahead going into the crucial bank holiday weekend, where there were six up for grabs. The first of two games was Sunderland, who needed the points themselves to win the competition. Well, the points will be useful to Sunderland, but they'd love to turn it into three. And that would possibly give a twist. had lost at Chelsea to leave Arsenal just one point away from the title. And come time against Manchester United at Highbury on bank holiday Monday, they'd handed over three, losing again to Notts Forest. Arsenal took the field as champions for the second time in three years, and what would have been a hard-fought battle of vital points turned into a title party. We watched it at the golf club where we have our pretty much meal and then we listened to it on the radio on the way to the ground and then we were able to watch just the last bit at the ground and uh, obviously there's a big crowd in at Highbury already and they all listened to it so it made a party at the final week. Yeah, we're all in the um, tea room and uh, watching the game all the coaching staff and the players together and um, we were just praying that uh, obviously Forest could hold out and gladly they did and... Um, we won the title, and I mean, it's been a dream come true for me. I didn't know, really know how to feel. I, I sort of looked at the other lads and, you know, tried to, sort of, you know, they've done it before. What, what do you do? How do you act? All the hard work that went in, it was nice to be able to watch the uh, Liverpool game beforehand and then and play in a relaxed position. Was that an anti-climax, or was it better to be able to go out and relax and celebrate? Better to be relaxed, I think. Um, there might be a bit more pressure if Liverpool would have won, and I don't think we would have been able to enjoy the occasion too much. It wasn't an anti-climax, really. We had a celebration before, really. Yeah. <laughs> and to go and play, it's hard. No, 
let's do it. Get yourself up. How about this? Is it nice to win a game to spare for once rather than coming down to the final moments of the season? <laughs> That's quite fascinating, actually, because uh, before we actually played Manchester United, um, obviously Liverpool, people were saying to me, would you have prepared, would you have uh, preferred Liverpool to have won so that we would end up with a lot more satisfaction? I said, you'd be joking. I actually sat there and enjoyed watching the Manchester United game, knowing we were champions. There was plenty to enjoy as Arsenal relaxed and turned on the style. That's going to be another throw. Dixon alive for it. And a goal for Arsenal. Quick thinking from the Arsenal point of view. Too quick for Manchester United, who were rather flat-footed at the original throw, and Dixon moved in to get it from Merson. And in the middle, Alan Smith, 24th of the season. Campbell inside him. Trying to pull away from him so that Campbell could slide a pass. Again. 25 now. And it's going to be a party tonight here at Highbury. By Davis. by Walsh. Adams. Was it handball in there? has been given and Lee Dixon who is a great friend of Alan Smith's has waived his right to take the penalty to give Smith the chance of a hat trick and he's got it there. and now Robbins and the referee's given another penalty this one for Manchester United. David Seaman a little surprised by the decision, but I think he meant to bring Robbins down. And this gets his 19th goal of the season. It means a lot to him, but not too much to most people here at Highbury. Amid the team celebration, there was special satisfaction for Alan Smith, who'd edged nearer the Golden Boot Award with his hat-trick finished off from the penalty spot. That was my first uh, penalty in professional football because I've never liked taking it before. Um, but he was kind enough to have it. And, uh, I was on my hat-trick, there was no pressure. Uh, I wouldn't like to take it when there's pressure on it. For Dave Seaman, though, the chance to top a dream season by equaling Ray Clements's record of conceding just 16 league goals had fallen, along with the United Robins in the penalty box. I was aware of it, like, the last couple of games, and, you know, like, got the penalty, which uh, out of the window, and that was it. You know, that's just a little extra, you know, as far as I'm concerned. We've got this. Didn't you mind the seconds after you pulled him down, was it? <laughs> Somebody, one of the press lads said to me after the game, he says, you done if they sent you off. And I said, well, I'd most likely took him with me. <laughs> Winning the league while you watch TV may not have the glamour of a last gasp goal at Anfield, but for veterans of the 89 team, this win brought the satisfaction of knowing that no one could now write Arsenal off as a one-title team. It's nice that way. I mean, it's a professional club on and off the field. And uh, as I say, even though we'd won the, the league title before we stepped out against Manchester United, we went down there into the professional job and that's what wins your league titles and wins you many other things. Other things for Arsenal next season of course will include the European Cup. First though there was the small match this season to be dealt with. The new Arsenal superstore was doing a roaring trade in championship souvenirs and advanced video orders. The fans were already on forward to autumn 91. Will you be going to Europe? Yeah. yeah, well I'll try if I've got money. Yes. 
Why not? If I had to crawl, I'll go. Say we are top elite. Say we are top elite. Say we are top elite. This is Colonel St. Greasy. <laughs> <laughs> we hate him. <laughs> Well, you guys are going to go to Europe like this next season. Yeah, yeah. right, yeah. Into, into, here we come. <laughs> if they're there. Well, well whatever, you know. Go with you. We're there anyway. We're there, they might not be. <laughs> Frankly, the crowd couldn't have cared less if Inter had been that day's visitors. This was the chance for everyone, from paying customers to players, to relax and savour the success of a long, hard season. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Hello. Hello. The day's game wasn't entirely without a meaning of its own, though. As well as a general feeling of wanting to go out on a high note, the players had the added incentive of preserving their record of just one league defeat. For players like David Rowcastle, though, pride in the season's achievements was tinged with frustration at having been a spectator for long stretches of it. I've seen both sides of it, really, because uh, when we won the title two years ago, I was ever-present, I played every game, so I've seen the other side where I've just played a few games. and. Uh, if I had another question asked, can you get a championship medal, do you qualify? I mean, it was driving me mad because I forgot about the first two months of the season, which I lost the games. Incentive for next season, Europe. Yeah, I'm not going to say anything about next season, because after last season, I said I'm looking forward to this season, and uh, it's gone how it has, so uh, I'm just going to say I'll be pulled back on the 8th. <laughs> Field, Lee Dixon and Dave Seaman limbered up for the lap of honour with a few public relations exercises. While in the tunnel, the team mascots were briefed on the basics of the game. I want you to smile. I haven't seen anyone smile yet. Smile. That's it. Last week smiles, last week waves. You're going up. Because if you look down at your feet, you get a great big picture of the top of your head. Before kick-off, there was another trophy to be collected, this one by the boss. The seat, it was showtime. Mason. Emerson trying to raise the ball wide to set up. Mason has caught Coventry.
off his first season in England with a hat he has done. already in the back. So Arsenal's last win of the season was their biggest. There'd been 23 others, 13 draws and one away defeat. The fewest allowed by any for over a century. <laughs> After a few minutes it was back out for the encores and some hands-on experience of the the only absentee from the previous week's celebrations. While the great reception for the team continued outside, in the tunnel the Highbury staff were laying plans for one of their own. Just throw a few eggs at Steve Bart, oh, why? <laughs> because he threw our box office manager in the um, bath, so we're going to get him back. It's a great move, otherwise you're going to... I'm going to know the best. For the 
second time in a week, a few bottles of Chateau Gatsby Road were cracked open, and the start of a long evening yes, began. Once the celebrations and a working holiday in Singapore are completed, we'll be able to what's left of the season. Set the standard for the rest of the First Division this season. We'll be back to London Colney to try to do it all again. A season. We've built the best team in the country and now we're going to build the best stadium. You'll hear now about our plans to redevelop the North Bank. Here's what a few of our stars, past and present, think about it. England's vigorous assault is not yet held and their centre forward Drake scores with a beautiful hook. Three up in less than a quarter of an hour. I think it's a great idea. And then his own gunners are pressing hard. It was right half form, she was largely responsible which was put through by Houghton. This is a terrific idea. A real winner. George. He's got it. Don't miss out. Why not now? My bone started with Arsenal when I was 15. The club once again are showing their qualities of leadership. I'm sorry, Ben. Come join me. Oh, what a goal! Don't miss out on Arsenal's future. Sign today. So there you have it. Now's your chance. Sign for the Arsenal. Phone 0345-900-900 for a prospectus now. <laughs>